So after trashing the Rolling Stone last week, which by the way, great reception on that video, I had a handful of you ask me to do my top list and it's not gonna be like the Rolling Stone being like, this is the definitive, like objective type of list. These are the 10 guitar players that after doing some thought on and doing some reflection, I think are the most influential on me. Which by the way, this isn't even necessarily my list of my top 10 favorite guitar players. Just because they were influential on me does not mean they're even my favorite. As a guitar player and songwriter myself, these are the guys that I would say had the biggest, strongest impact on me during my development as a musician. Only ever so slightly wrong in the title, I'm going to add one extra guy at the beginning here as an honorable mention. And his name is, drum roll, drum roll. There's probably not a drum roll. Future Mike is too lazy to edit in a drum roll. Growing up in the 90s in America meant two of my favorite TV shows were on all the time, on Fox actually. Mighty Morphin Power Rangers and the X-Men animated series. Those two theme songs I think were the ignition for me to get into metal music. You wouldn't necessarily instantly call them metal on first listen, although Power Rangers definitely, I think, is closer to it. But it has the same mood and ethos of a lot of metal songs. Ron Wasserman composed both of those themes and he did an absolutely awesome job. I would go far enough to say it's possible he is one of the most unsung heroes in the millennial generation's childhood. Even to this day, I still love listening to both of those theme songs. They instantly take me right back and get me at the deepest part of my love of music. Jimmy Page is kind of an obvious choice for a lot of people, but a less obvious one for me. I started playing when I was 12 and a half, and it was about that time that my brother went off to the Marine Corps and he left a bunch of his CDs behind for me to rummage through and listen to without his permission or knowledge. And in there was a greatest hits of Led Zeppelin that I listened to regularly. You wanna talk about inspiring, listening to Led Zeppelin and then saying, you know what? I'm gonna try and play this damn thing on the guitar. It was actually trying to learn the Stairway to Heaven solo by myself that prompted me to ask my dad to get lessons. So yeah, Jimmy Page is the guitar player that made me say, hey, I need to start taking this more seriously. Now, some people might not think it's fair for me to lump all of these guys together in one spot, but I, I had to because of what it means to me. Ozzy's three lead guitar players that I like the most, Randy Rhodes, Zach Wilde, and Jakey e. Lee, are super influential on me and in how I absorb and write solos and also how I approached the solo in general. Any of their solos that I tried to learn, like I tried learning Crazy Train, I tried learning Bark at the Moon, I tried learning No More Tears solo. I did all of that on my own by trying to figure it out by ear. I don't think I ever got them 100% correct, but I got them pretty dang close. This was a period in time when I was exploring many more avenues of old school metal that I hadn't picked up before because of my sheltered childhood. And I was starting to see what it really meant to make a great rock or hard rock solo. Solos that would just tickle your, your funny bone, your spine the right way. <laughs> Dimebag Daryl easily has to be on this list for me. I don't consider much of his songwriting or definitely not his tone very influential on me, but he wrote two solos in particular that might be my favorite solos of all time. The solo from the ever, ever embarrassing power metal, We'll Meet Again, is an absolutely amazingly tasty solo, both in phrasing and articulation. And then the solo for Floods is like, one of the greatest written solos for a song I've ever heard in my life. A lot of people, when I suggested Floods, were like, dude, I really don't like this. I think you need to go into it with a different frame of mind, because at first I didn't care for it either. Absolutely heart-wrenching, dig into your muscle and just rip it out of your body type of intense. His screaming, wailing bends and smacking the ever so slightest of harmonics at certain parts. Just, oh, so good.
I would be doing myself a disservice if I didn't put him on this list. I never learned a bunch of Jimi Hendrix stuff. I never really loved a lot of Jimi Hendrix's work. And especially when I started getting into the prog realm, I actually was disdainful of Jimi Hendrix for a period of time. I was always fascinated and impressed by his improvisation skills. That, that's never gone away. But it wasn't until the last five years or so I've started to reappreciate what Jimi actually did for the guitar and how, whether directly or indirectly, he did influence me a lot. Especially in opening up my mind to what improvisation actually was and how you could turn that into a live performance art. <laughs> Misha Mansoor. I was hesitant to put him on the list in the first place, but I don't think I could make a list without him being on here because of the powerful influence that Periphery had on me. Misha's writing opened up my mind to what you could do with rhythms and with phrasing as far as writing riffs. And over time, that also translated over into how he phrases his solos as well. It's not just that he was groundbreaking for the genre, but he was also groundbreaking for me personally because he helped me finally tap into obnoxiously low tuned guitars. And he finally helped me tap into obnoxious growling vocals that those were some serious breaking open moments for me. I still use influences of Misha in my writing today. <laughs> Steve Harris of Iron Maiden. Now I know what you're all saying, but Mike, he's a bass player. Steve Harris was the main songwriter for Iron Maiden and probably still is for the most part. And he would have songs that were completed soup to nuts that he would bring to the band and be like, okay, this is what we're playing. So there's many instances where he wrote guitar riffs and licks that I love and learned and are hugely influential on my playing now. We can also lump Adrian Smith and Dave Murray in this spot as well, because I'm sure that they have had influence on me as writers and players that I wouldn't have without them. But definitely Iron Maiden as a whole had a huge impact on me. It was some of the first metal riffs I could pick up pretty darn quickly and love playing and put full intensity into it. It informed a lot of my early writing and still informs a lot of my writing to this day. If you're a young metal player out there, I highly recommend diving into Iron Maiden's catalog and their list of riffs that are just so great and not too difficult, but it gives you something to latch onto and maybe take an extra step up from where you are. <laughs> These next four will be no surprise. If you've seen my top 10 artists list, you know what this is gonna be. But now you'll actually get some insight as to how each of these guys affected me as guitar players. <laughs> James Hetfield, was the guy whose metal riffs I learned first. James Hetfield's writing style is forever baked into me as a guitar player and a songwriter myself. I have been spending most of my time as a guitar player trying to get away from sounding exactly like Metallica. And I always find it creeping in ever so always. <laughs> the dude can write some badass riffs. Plain and simple. <laughs> Michael Ackerfelt of Opeth, of course. Ackerfelt opened me up to the idea of how to properly saturate a sonic space with the guitar as a complement to the rest of the instruments. He's a huge influence on the tone that I'm chasing. As a songwriter, he helped open my mind up to many types of harmony that I would have never thought to have tried. Very unorthodox, very dark. And his chord colorings so impact how I look at making my own chord voicings. It's absolutely unmistakable the impact that Michael Ackerfeld has had on me. For crying out loud, I wrote a song that was an Opeth ripoff, like just because I wanted to. I'd say I got pretty dang close. <laughs> For those of you who haven't seen it, that's called Won't Be Saved. It's here on the channel, and you can also find it on Spotify and other streaming services. <laughs> no duh, John Petrucci. It's kind of coincidental that John Petrucci is my second favorite guitar player because of this specific moment. Who is your favorite guitar player besides Steve Morse? You. 
<laughs> let's, let's, let's get into it. I about freaking died when that happened. I I didn't know how to handle it. I really didn't. I, it completely threw me off guard and I shit my pants. I discovered Dream Theater while in college and going into college, I was pretty much strictly a metalhead with some classic rock in there. I was pretty elitist about it too. And going to school for music and learning about classical music and thinking to myself, well, I'm sure I'll be able to learn things and be able to apply them to metal and make some interesting stuff. Uh, I had no idea what I was getting myself into. Part of the requisites you had to complete for each semester was going to a certain number of recitals. These recitals had music ranging from many periods and many styles of quote unquote classical music. Very infrequently jazz, but there was some jazz too. This exposed me to a new world of composition and timbre and really helped open my mind and enjoy and appreciate a lot of different types of music. And when John Petrucci came into the picture with Dream Theater, fusing these strong classical elements with some jazz with the metal that I love, whoa. Dream Theater was a catharsis moment for me as far as writing and like sonic imaging goes, how you can picture this stuff. Then when I finally grew the balls to try and learn some of these songs, <laughs> Petrucci helped rein me in to really know what it takes to be an absolutely mind-blowingly good guitar player. Learning his phrasing, trying to learn his technique, learning his thought and process approaching the guitar, learning his writing style. I am so ever grateful to that man and what he's done for me. If I've said it once, I've said it a billion times. Steve Vai. I found Steve Vai while I was taking lessons from my guitar teacher in high school. Those lessons only lasted a couple of months because I was messing up in school. But my guitar teacher, Eric Worsing, handed me a CD of Ingve, a CD of Joe Satriani, and a CD of Steve Vai. And growing up with all of this Ozzy Osbourne and Pantera and Jimi Hendrix and Jimmy Page, you think this is as good as it gets. And then you listen to these guys and you're like, holy crap. The mind altering and mind opening moment of like, there is so much more to this instrument than I even imagined. It wasn't until a year or so later when I really settled in on Steve Vai more than Satriani and definitely more than Ingve. Vai's expression and quirky writing at first made me think like, eh, I don't know. Joe Satriani is definitely more accessible. The more time you spend listening to Steve Vai, the more you start to understand if that makes any sense. The more of these truly elated moments that he has that are just like, wow inspired. His phrasing on the guitar makes me push myself harder to make a unique articulation that is mine and mine alone. I'm not saying I have accomplished that, but I am saying that I want to achieve that because he has absolutely achieved that. He can literally make the guitar speak, if you will. And when I really realized that in my teenage years, I knew that's what I wanted to do, was make the guitar speak. I really got into Steve Vai well before I got into Hendrix. And going to Hendrix after the fact, you're kind of like, well, this isn't as good. <laughs> I can see people going to Hendrix right from Jimmy Page or Eric Clapton or even Ozzy Osbourne and Dimebag Daryl and being like, whoa. Going from Steve Vai back to Hendrix is not nearly as impactful of an experience, I promise you. Steve Vai is my personal Jimi Hendrix. I don't think there's a better, more succinct way of summing it up. So these are the guys that are responsible for the jerk that's sitting in front of you right now. Uh, who inspired you to pick up the guitar? I wanna hear what you have to say in the comments down below. 
I appreciate you guys watching this video. It really does mean a lot. Please leave a like. That really does help out the channel a lot. I know this sounds weird, but sharing these videos on other platforms is a huge, huge help to the channel. YouTube loves having traffic driven to their website, and that helps my channel out if I did that. You can also support me on Subscribestar. For those of you who aren't aware, my YouTube ad revenue is awful. Without the song suggestion live streams and without your continued support on Subscribestar, I can't keep doing this. There's no way. Don't forget to check me out on social media. I'm on Instagram, Facebook, and Twitter, at Become the Night. Thank you guys so much for watching. I'll see you in the next video. Rock on!